but that 88 is pulling away. Earnhardt, Johnson, Menard, Blaney, third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brings him to the flag, checkered flag, waving, it's over, it's Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying to cover all oh, spots. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Good job, Jim Buck! Woo! Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jim checkered flag at Talladega. Why is this one so much fun? Because your grin told so many stories on your cooldown lap. It's just real emotional. I haven't won here in a long time. It's my daddy's birthday a couple days ago. It's just real emotional, man. Uh, my word, bro. And welcome to it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, this week's race preview for Kentucky is uh, going to serve as much as a race preview podcast to let you know uh, how Dale Jr. is heading into a reconfigured Kentucky as it is a therapy for uh, this host, John Justice. I'm frustrated for a, a, a lot of different reasons. And like a lot of fans that follow Dale Jr. are frustrated. But again, I'm frustrated because of the fans, not so much the reason why many of the fans are frustrated. I'll explain a little bit later on, but I need to vent. I need to vent. The, the podcast this week is called Time to Worry because we will talk about the concerns that we have for the, uh, for the 88 team and where they currently are. It looks like it's a problem for all of Hendrick Motorsports. We will go through a little bit about what the hell happened last week in Daytona and then look ahead to this weekend's race and talk a bit about whether or not it is time to worry and why so many Dale Jr. fans uh, tick me off, especially on Twitter. I haven't done this rant in a while, and it only usually pops up when the team is struggling, and suddenly now everybody becomes an expert on how to set the car up and what Greg Ives should be doing. They don't do their homework when they're looking at things like single lap times on the speed chart. They want to make blanket condemnations of the team, and I just have to sit back and go, if you're going to be so negative, why in the world are you a fan? That's what I don't understand. So we'll get to that. I, as you can tell, I'm sort of chomping at the bit to to dive into that. Uh, we will talk a little bit of merchandise. There's one quick item uh, that's available that seems new that I want to mention on a positive note. And then we will, again, talk a bit about uh, Kentucky and my prediction for this weekend's race now that uh, we've gone through the majority of the, uh, of the, of the practices. Look, it's clear the team is off. It's clear that Hendrick Motorsports is off. Is it time to worry yet? I'm not ready to say that it is. All of the different circumstances that it seems like Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the team have been dealing with have been very specific to tracks, getting in uh, situations that they shouldn't have to be in. None of them really, to me, point to a larger systemic issue as it relates for the team as a whole. When you begin to look back at sort of the last two months and you go to each individual race and you break down what's happened at each individual race, it's tough to find a common thread. I guess you could say luck is a bit of a common thread. They've had some they've had a run of bad luck and being in circumstances that they shouldn't have been in. You could say that qualifying has been a bit of an issue. And that perhaps lending itself to the team starting in spots where it's become more difficult or they're around drivers that could potentially get them in trouble like with what happened at Michigan. But you can always go and counter an argument like that saying, well, you're going to be in lap traffic and you're going to have to drive past those drivers even if you're the fastest guy on the track. So it's really tough to diagnose the larger issue, a larger issue as it relates to, to the Nationwide 88 team except to say this one thing confidence and it's something that i've talked about a ton on the podcast uh over the course of well, now my second year of doing the dale jr race preview podcast and that is confidence i think the team is down if there is one issue it's the team is frustrated and down and that's why i get so frustrated when i go to twitter and i see yes stupid comments from alleged dale earnhardt jr fans Okay, and I'm getting ahead of myself again. All right, so before we get to that, I, I do want to talk a bit at length about that. Let's let's just discuss Daytona briefly. I don't have an answer. 
you don't have an answer. And quite honestly, I don't think the team has an answer as to what happened. There's obviously something wrong with the super speedway cars or restrictor plate car setups that they have not fixed yet. Whatever they tried to solve by going back to last year's setup didn't work. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had the same problem at Daytona last week that he had in the first two plate races this year with a new setup. And he even said as much during the race that they still felt like they were, they were going to be spinning out. And I know that Dale Jr. said that handling has suddenly become an issue at Daytona, but at the same time, you also got to figure that at Talladega, they had the same problem in Talladega. Rarely is there a handling issue because of just how big that track is. I'm confident the team will figure out what it is that they're doing wrong in these setups and fix and, and fix it. This is not an issue that carries over into a racetrack like Kentucky. This is a specific restrictor plate uh, issue that they're dealing with. And yeah, it is incredibly frustrating to watch who is arguably the best uh, restrictor plate race car driver on the circuit go out there and just not be able to do anything on the racetrack. And I watched it, watching it on race view. You could see if he ran the high line, he could kind of stay in the gas. But if he ran the low line, he was having to back all the way out of the gas. I mean, the, the closest they got to the leaders was at one point they were running sixth, but he couldn't, he couldn't maintain. He couldn't do anything with the car that he wanted to do. Ended up getting caught up, thankfully not as bad as it was, in the big one. And at the end of the race, he essentially had to ride it out to make sure that he maintained his position on track so they didn't lose more points than they did. In retrospect, he only ended up losing three points in the, you know, in the chase for the championship points, still without a win. So the evening wasn't a total disaster, which it absolutely could have been. He could have easily had gotten caught up in that wreck uh, during, uh, dur- clo- you know, coming up towards the end of the of the race and been out completely and lost a bunch of points. And he didn't. As a fan, I was frustrated that Dale Jr. couldn't get up there and mix it up and race harder. It was very reminiscent of the probably the biggest disappointment that we've ever had at a restrictor plate uh, track, and that would be Talladega when he lagged back and didn't even bother going for it at the end because he had a victory, which caused so much controversy. I'm going to cut Dale Earnhardt Jr. some slack when it comes to Daytona because they're in a position without a win where they've got to count points now, and it's really unfortunate that they are, but they are. With the number of different drivers that are winning all of these different different races, they have to pay attention to the points. And that, unfortunately, put Dale Jr. in a position on Saturday night where he wasn't going to try to go and mix it up with an ill-handling, banged-up race car for fear that he could have been caught in an even bigger mess and lost even more points. And this is where the confidence part comes in. And this is where the team, I think, is having the biggest struggle. Because you can't point to one particular issue as it relates to, well, we're having this problem or this problem. There's a lot of little tiny problems that is leading to a larger issue of a lack of confidence. And even going into Kentucky, it's pretty clear that they're having to get their arms around this new configured racetrack. Dale Jr. in his press conference was talking about how weird the entry was going into turn three, where it's essentially flat and then it slowly banks as they head into it and how difficult it is to get the car to handle right. They added some three degrees of banking into terms one and two. And if the truck race was any indication, I think a lot of guys are going to be riding on the bottom. I don't know if running any higher than the bottom line is going to do anybody any good. So, the jury is going to be out until you know the end of this race or the next Kentucky race on whether or not they made the right decision to repave. They kind of had to repave because they were having some issue as it relates to weepers and the water seeping up through the track. But we've got uh, a team now that is lacking confidence because of what happened last week and the the past month's worth of just bad luck heading into a brand new racetrack with very few notes with a car that didn't necessarily come come off the truck with a uh, with a ton of speed. Now, look, not all is lost in all this and and suddenly my defense of the team is turning into my own batch of negativity. Don't misunderstand. I think this team is a winning team. I think that Greg Ives is a great crew chief. 
I think the entire organization, well, I don't think I know, the entire Hendrick org- organization right now is is off their game. And they will figure it out. And hopefully they'll figure it out in time for for the chase. The good news is, is that we're starting in a good spot. We'll get to that in just a moment. And if this team has shown anything, they have shown some speed. We just need a little bit of luck to go our way to bring up that confidence level. I really thought that coming off of Sonoma and the speed that was in the car, despite getting banged up because of the tussle between Carl Edwards and Joey Logano, uh, we were poised for a much better finish. But I really thought that heading into Daytona, we would have been really going into Kentucky with a ton of confidence, given that we all expected and I expected the 88 team to run better than it did. And obviously they've got a major issue specifically as it relates to their restrictor play program that has now got the team in a, in a tough spot heading into again, a brand new track. All right. I want to comment a little bit more on this. Let me just talk briefly about some merchandise. If you're in the market for Dale junior gear, I want to encourage you to go to NASCAR.com and again, as I mentioned last week, they have a, a new way to order. They have a new layout at NASCAR.com. And I'm looking at a brand new uh, red Exalta a t-shirt. This is a uh, red Exalta chassis a two-spot t-shirt. It's a really, really good-looking uh, t-shirt. I'm a big fan of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, gear. Uh, I buy many t-shirts throughout the year and have have already purchased my fair share of Dale Jr. gear this year. I really wish that they had released this uh, shirt a shirt earlier. And if he runs this same Exalta paint scheme next year, I'll certainly go back online and purchase it. But it's a great looking t-shirt. If you look in the market to buy some new gear, just go on by NASCAR.com. And of course, they have the upcoming Darling, uh, Darlington throwback uh, t-shirt gear there. If you want to get your ha- if you want to get your hands on the uh, Dale Jr. Uh, red, white, and blue. Uh, car that he ran uh, a couple of months back that's available there as well but in terms of new items that's pretty much the only new item that I see on the uh, on the website now Dale Jr. is running a, uh, a special paint scheme this weekend uh, it is one that has uh, many individuals names on it if you went to the website as I did and uh, signed up for the promotion uh, you can have your name on the uh, on the hood of the car this is the nationwide kids car so it's sort of the nationwide foundation uh, car that's uh, all blue. It's got some butterflies on it. It has you know hundreds of names uh, on the car as well. It's a really really good looking uh, race car. Really cool, unique, different paint scheme. Special paint scheme for a worthy cause. And you can purchase those items on the website as well. This is probably the only time this year that they will run uh, this race car. Dale Jr. and uh, and his fiance Amy. Uh, went down to a, a hospital and visited some of these nationwide kids. He's been tweeting about that uh, this week, which is really cool to see. Again, another reason why I'm a huge fan of of Dale Earnhardt Jr. So we got a special paint scheme uh, this weekend, uh, and you can pick up the gear at the website. I think it's really cool, something different. And again, another reason why I'm such a huge fan of Dale Earnhardt Jr. is just um, how willing he has always been to give back to the uh, to the community and this weekend with this nationwide kit with nationwide kids paint scheme is certainly uh, is certainly no different. Okay, now that I'm through with the positive, before we get to um, a little bit more positive when it comes to the race preview portion of the podcast this week, I need to go off for just a moment. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans on Twitter are really ticking me off, and there's a larger issue here that I won't get into on the podcast. It's something that I have talked about on my own. A weekly radio show quite a bit and that is as a society we really have not figured out how to deal with social networking well yet and what I mean by that is the ability of people to go online excuse me at any given moment and express their opinion about something no matter how ridiculous and stupid that opinion is and how everybody suddenly now feels like they are an expert in all things, and they're going to go on Twitter and express how much of an expert they are. We just don't we don't handle it well. And it, look, even for me, I'm the example of reading these comments and not handling it well. It's not like suddenly people now are giving opinions when they never gave opinions. Everybody has always had an opinion. Ever since NASCAR started, everybody has always had the ability to express their opinion to friends and family. But that's usually where it stayed. Now, with social networking platforms via uh, whether it's Facebook or 
or, or Twitter or Instagram, especially with Twitter, people have the ability to express outwardly their opinion. And even